in this tutorial we will co cover up once the player okay once the player get close enough to enemy it, uh, enemy uh, will play attack animation clip as you seen okay we will uh, create that so let's uh, get into this without furthering delay i'm gonna uh, ch choose this sprites light bandit okay light bandit and select this ideal one let's drag it into this in view we barely able to see our enemy sprite okay so we need to make it a little bit large to do so uh, select all of the sprite by holding down shift okay holding down shift uh, let's uh, select all of the sprites by holding down shift and move over to inspector uh, select pixel per unit to a less number let's do 16 okay 16 and uh, to get rid of blurry select filter mode to point no filter okay and hit this apply button and now it will apply all of them and uh, because this is an pixel art so that is the reason uh, selecting point no filter okay filter mode and uh, make sure that let's drag this light bandit idle to in the top of hierarchy so we can see it and let's rename this light bandit idle to a enemy okay enemy now it's fine let's move it over here uh, add uh, two components to this game object firstly the obvious one rigid body for uh, gravity so hit this add component and find their rigid body 2d okay and uh, go over to gravity scale let's increase the gravity 3 and choose colli collision detection to continuous so it will continuously detect the collision and collision will be precise okay and uh, freeze the go move over to constraint and freeze rotation about z axis if you uh, don't do it then if we move over to transform then rotation and play around with z axis uh, the enemy will flip like this so it's kind of you know, will be weird okay so that is the reason so let's choose zero one more time and freeze the rotation about z axis let's and add another component for collision detection okay box collider 2d or a, this game object will go through this uh, ground okay so that is the reason so hit this add component find their box uh, by typing box collider 2d and uh, let's resize the collider as the size of a sprite by hitting add edit collider okay and make the collider as the size of sprite and once you done hit this one more time and now we are fine so let's make the animation uh, we we will have two animation uh, the ideal one and other one the attack once the player uh, get close enough to enemy it should enemy should play attack animation clip okay uh, to do so let's uh, create the animation so we need this animation tab if you can find animation tab you just have to go to window in the top then animation or control 6 as well as the animator tab okay so select this anime game object uh, and um, let's move this animation tab over here for creating animation clips uh, and I select the anime game object and hit this create button uh, let's move over to assets folder and in assets we have created this animation folder so let's move over to that and create a subfolder by right clicking on it a new folder and name that folder to enemy underscore animation okay to keep things a little more organized let's open up that subfolder once you created let's rename this enemy animation new animation clip to enemy underscore idle enemy underscore idle and save it i'm gonna replace this one save it and once you done uh, hit this record button to record your animation and drag all of the ideal sprite into this animation tip uh, animation tab to make your ideal animation clip so hit this record button let's drag all of the ideal any uh, animation sprite by holding down shift and move it over to animation tab and hit this play button to play your animation it seems pretty quiet first so let's make uh, or make spaces between these keyframes or sprites let's move over to 20 okay 20 now hit this play button uh, now it seems uh, pretty quite good so once you done hit this record button one more time and let's create a another animation clip which is the attack one to do so uh, click on over here enemy idle and create a new clip let's rename this clip to enemy underscore attack animation clip and save it 
I'm gonna replace this one and hit this record button to record your animation and drag all of the attack animation sprites over here in animation tab so I have over here so holding down shift and select all of them and move it over to animation tab so let's move this one to be 30 and hit this play button to play the animation let's move it to 25 I guess 25 or 20 would be nice okay uh, let's move it to 25 once it's good then uh, hit this record button okay so uh, 26 is i guess let's move it to 30 30 would be nice so let's leave it as 30 30 frames okay so it's quite good so once you done hit this record button one more time now we have captured both of those animation so let's drag this animation tab down one more time okay and select this animator tab and uh, anime game object we have uh, anime underscore ideal animation clip and anime underscore attack animation clip so uh, when the game start it's just going right away playing anime underscore ideal animation clip okay so we also need to go to anime underscore attack animation clip once the player close enough to our enemy and enemy should play attack animation clip so we need to make transition between these two states so you can set any of them default state by just right clicking on it and set as layer default state but i'm gonna leave with ideal one okay and let's make transition between these two animation clips so right click on it and make transition to enemy underscore attack animation clip and select this arrow and untick this exit exit, exit time basically it's mean it will play the 0.2% 2.8% 2 of ideal animation clip then it will move over to enemy attack animation clip but we don't want to do that once the player is close enough to enemy it should play attack animation clip right away we don't wanna wait like that and choose transition duration to zero okay and uh, we have to choose a certain condition in which condition we want to go so let's set a parameter and we want to set uh, that will be a bull parameter okay and uh, if we set that parameter to be true it should play attack animation clip right away so let's choose a parameter to do so in the left side you can see parameter so hit this plus icon and select this bull one which can be true or false and select this uh, let's call this one to be attack okay oh, we want to set this parameter to be true once it's true it will play the enemy underscore attack animation clip right away so choose that condition okay so hit this plus icon so if attack is true it will play the enemy underscore attack animation clip right away okay but we also need to go back to enemy underscore uh, ideal animation clip once the player is not close enough to uh, enemy okay so we also need to make transition to ideal animation clip so to do so right click on enemy underscore attack animation clip and make transition to enemy and i uh, underscore ideal animation clip and select this arrow and take this axis has exit time we are gonna go immediately and choose transition duration to zero okay and choose the condition in which condition you want to go so we uh, we gonna set this attack parameter to be false okay this bull parameter it can be true or false we want to set this to be false once it's false it will play uh, it will should play the enemy underscore ideal animation clip right away so choose that condition or hit this plus icon and let's uh, select this attack to be false and once it's false it will play enemy underscore ideal animation clip okay so now uh, clear the console for a bit and select this animator time and hit this play button uh, right away ideal animation clip will be played once the game start off enemy and once we set this parameter to be true okay uh, true it will play the attack animation clip so okay now if i set this to true as you can see enemy just playing attack over again and again and again but once we set this, set this to be false it's playing the ideal if you see it okay so now hit this play button one more time uh, now uh, we want to set this attack parameter through our code if the player is close enough to enemy then we will set it to true else we will set it to false okay so let's make a separate script for our enemy to do all of these things to changing animation okay as well as attacking player to do so let's move over to assets right click on it 
create switch up script name it to enemy or something like that and select this enemy game object drag that script to add component section okay so let's uh, drag this enemy to add component section basically attach the script to enemy game object okay and double click that to open up in visual studio so by default we have start and update function okay let's uh, move on to top of our enemy class and let's assign some variable first okay uh, to attack our player we need a player position uh, we need to check player position if the player is close enough to enemy uh, okay if it's <coughs> If it's that case, then enemy should play attack animation clip, else it, it, it shouldn't. Okay, so we need player position, means this player transform we can see. It has position, rotation and scale. So we need the transform of player. So let's make a variable for our player transform. Uh, let's make it public. That will be transform. Okay, uh, transform. Let's call it to player transform, player position or player. So I'm going to call it player and close that off with semicolon and make sure you drag the reference in it by default this one will be empty okay uh, make sure you drag the reference and after it you will able to check the distance between them and the second thing uh, we want to uh, create a second parameter which will be oh, so let's move over to instead uh, update function for now and we will use this uh, if condition and update function we know it's just call every single frame so that is the reason uh, using it because we need to check the player position every single frame if, if it's close enough to enemy or not okay so we will use this vector 2 dot distance okay vector 2 dot distance function over here takes two vectors or two position and it will compare between them the distance between yeah, okay so let's uh, pass our transform dot position means the current position of the enemy we know uh, if we move over to unity and uh, we can see uh, if i select this enemy game object we attach our enemy script to our enemy game object so the transform dot position means this transform okay uh, means the current position and the second thing we will check for player okay player dot uh, position okay firstly we going to player transform and we accessing the position of the player and we will what we will do we will check between them if it's lesser than or equal to some kind of distance so let's say three but instead of hard coding this let's make a variable for it so let's go to top of our class uh, let's make it public so we can set through inspector let's call this so that will be float and let's call attack distance instead attack distance and by default you can give any value you like but i'm gonna leave as it is like this and close that off with semicolon i'm gonna set it through inspector so that is the reason so let's replace this uh, 3f to attack distance okay attack distance and close that off uh, and make this some curly brackets so to play our attack animation clip we need the animator component okay so if i select this animator uh, once we created this animation clips ideal and attack by default we have added uh, by default it's added a animator component and this uh, component is here to switching animation and playing animation clips so we need the graph the reference of this animator first and after it we can switch up our animation to attack or ideal depending upon if the uh, player is close enough to enemy or not so let's move to script one more time uh, let's create a another public field for our animator okay uh, public uh, animator uh, animator uh, okay animator let's call this to animator and close that off with semicolon so uh, uh, make uh, or of course you need to drag the animator uh, to animator field component by default this one will be empty so we will have the reference then after we can switch up our animation so over here we checking if the vector 2 dot distance transform dot position means the current position of enemy and player position if it's lesser than or equal to attack distance or some kind of distance between them so what we wanna do we wanna play uh, attack animation clip right away so we have to move over to animation first and we have to set that bool parameter that is an bool parameter which is true or false okay uh, and first argument we have to pass the id or uh, in a string name okay sorry a string name if we move over to enemy we can see we have uh, made a bool parameter which is attack it can be true or false okay so in quotation as a first argument we have to set that bool 
okay so in quotation we have to type the name as we did and make the spelling correct else it will not work and second argument we have to set the value if it's uh, what we want to do I just wanna set it to true or false so in that case we just wanna set it to true okay and close that off with semicolon so that if the vector two dot distance if enemy position f and player position if it's lesser than or equal to attack distance firstly we just going over to animator component okay and by this animator component we setting this attack parameter in quotation we have to type and the uh, spelling should be correct we're setting this one to be uh, true okay and if it's true it will play right away the enemy attack animation clip okay once it's close enough to enemy so i hope you get the basics idea of it else okay else if the distance between uh, player and enemy position if it's not lesser than or equal to this uh, attack distance in that situation what we wanna do we wanna play the uh, ideal animation clip so let's copy this line of code control c and control v for pasting it and let's set it to be false okay uh, so let's set it so else means uh, in the if the distance between player and enemy if it's not lesser than or equal to uh, attack distance in that situation what we're doing we're just moving over to animator tab once again and we're setting that bull parameter which is attack we did uh, to be false and if it's false we know it's just playing the ideal animation clip over and again and again uh, because we have chosen that condition okay so control s to save your code let's move to unity and uh, we need to drag the reference both of them firstly and after it we can switch up our animation okay so just wait for it to compile and once it's done we will uh, able to see or notice that uh, enemy will play uh, okay enemy will play depending upon oh, if the player is close enough to enemy or not enemy will play those animation clip okay uh, firstly of course we need to drag the reference uh, first we have player which says none empty so let's drag this player transform in player okay and the animator so let's drag this animator to animator and let's uh, let's check the distance between them attack distance let's check for three okay and hit this play button to play your animation once the player and enemy get close enough to attack distance which is three if the distance between become uh, three or lesser than three it will play the attack animation clip right away so let's check that uh, so we can see the enemy just playing attack animation clip right away over again and again and again okay as you seen that so i hope you get the basics of uh, basics idea how you can play your animation so let's make this prefab okay uh, prefab means copy of this game object so let's select this prefab folder select the enemy game object and let's drag it to prefab folder okay and now if we delete from scene view or hierarchy we can just directly drag it to scene or hierarchy by uh, selecting it from that prefab folder so let's drag the player transform which says none so drag the reference in it uh, we have player over here so let's drag it over our player now now if we hit play it will work uh, uh, as uh, as it was before okay as uh, it was before like same thing uh, you need to make prefab of this game object so you will have the save option uh, or else you have to create from scratch so it's working fine so the next thing we have to cover up our two damage 